Bitcoin hit $50,000 this week. And if you are keen on investing in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, and you have no idea where to begin, this is the episode for you. On this video, I'm speaking to Africa's premier crypto investor, and he's gonna be showing us the path to becoming crypto investors ourselves. Welcome to the show. I am Yolanda and this is Financially Fabulous Females. On this channel, I give you easy tips, content and strategies that you can use to manage your money well and to build generational wealth. Now, Elon Musk has recently announced that his company Tesla has invested $1.5 billion in cryptocurrency. The South African Reserve Bank a couple of years back did a three month trial on transactions using cryptocurrency. The big American banks have resisted cryptocurrency for the longest of times, but are bracing themselves to welcome in this currency with open arms because the demand has been so huge. And there's definitely a future for cryptocurrency in personal finance for investors like you and me. So if you're ever wondering about cryptocurrency, what it's about, how to get started, we're gonna to chat to Africa's premier crypto investor, Gray Jabesi. He is an innovator and entrepreneur, he's the founder of the Crypto University, of Buy Bitcoin Malawi, of Image Motion, of Al Jafari Ventures, and he is the founder of the United African Blockchain Association. So he's somebody in the thick of things and he's on the show today and he's gonna share with us the way forward to becoming crypto investors. Now, if you wanna get your hands on some Bitcoin before it starts surging any further, click the video up here or even check the link below and you can sign up and join Luno a crypto exchange where you will get a free gift if you click that link and make your purchase now. So let's jump into that chat with Gray Jabesi. Thank you for having me. I'm doing well. I hope you're doing good as well. I am so hot in Durban today, so I have a bit of a sweat. All right, so Gray, you are, you're like the mastermind of crypto in Africa. So I had to have you on. You're also a guest at uh, the first virtual summit that we're putting on this year. Financial Success Summit. And I want you, I want to tap into your brain and to share with us all about this crypto rage that is happening right now. Oh yeah, thank you. Um, it is it is almost a rage. Yeah. But what has happened since last year is that for after a very long time, Bitcoin has now seen an insurgence of interest from institutional investors. Mm -hmm. So mainly it has always been retail and the institutional uh, guys have always been skeptical about it. But this time around, it seems like they have learned exactly what this thing is all about. And now the interest is just getting surged. And now, it, you know, one would get in and then the other one would see and would understand why they're doing it. And then they would follow. So the biggest ones in 2020 were uh, a company called MicroStrategy. It's a publicly traded company, okay. a software company. Uh, That's software in the U.S. or here? In the U.S. Yeah. Okay. So they took, they had cash and they took $420 million wow. of their cash reserves and decided to put it into Bitcoin and, you know, have Bitcoin in, as part of, the, of their balance sheets. So that then, you know, increased a lot more institutional investors. And by December, that was August. Yeah. And by December, Bitcoin was now sitting at $30,000. In March, it was sitting at $3,800. Mm -hmm. uh, when the lockdown started, it crashed yeah. to $3,800. And then by December, it was sitting at uh, $30,000. Yeah. And after that, Elon Musk uh, and Tesla <laughs> came in as well. They put $1.4 billion. Million, yes, yes. So you can imagine. So now we're even starting to, to see a lot more retail now because uh, in 2017, the, the market was pretty much driven by retail interest. Okay. This time around, it's more institutional and they're buying lots of Bitcoin. And then the other, the others, uh, the retail is now starting to follow because Bitcoin is becoming a lot more easier to buy right now with okay. PayPal uh, also jumping on the bandwagon. So if you have a PayPal account, currently available in the United States only, you are able to buy Bitcoin as well. And Square, which is also another company that was founded by Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, mm -hmm. they also decided to add Bitcoin. They bought $50 million worth of Bitcoin and yeah. make it possible for people to buy Bitcoin in their app. So, you know, the interest is enormous right now and it keeps on growing. 
Okay. So let's take it back a bit because I get a lot of questions from my clients as to what is Bitcoin specifically because they can't, they can't feel it. They can't touch it. It's, it's nothing tangible. So it's a little bit difficult to explain. So tell us in a nutshell, what is Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency? Well, it's not really hard to explain. Um, mm-hmm. If you think about, I think you have to think of, of money first, of what exactly is it? Yeah. So the, the simple question one can ask themselves is, what is the difference between a 200 rand note and what is the difference between a $10 note? Technically, there are no differences because they're just pieces of paper yeah. with, num- with paint and numbers on them saying this is a $10 and this is a rand. They actually, it, the, the money itself has no intrinsic value, the paper money. Yes. You know, so we have seen what happened to Zimbabwe before, where the papers become useless. You can have tons of them, you know, filling a house, but you can't do anything with it, right? Now, if you compare that to gold, that's not the same, because yeah. gold on its own, just having a small piece of gold, is actually worth something. Someone would be able to buy it from you. You can't just print it. You can't just decide to make some more gold. You actually have to put in work. Go, you know, find a mine dig in you might find some you might not find some right yeah. so that's what is about sound money or hard money okay. so bitcoin resembles gold uh it has the same uh sort of um uh parameters as gold except that it is digital which makes it even better because it's now easier to send around and receive but uh bitcoin just like gold it does not belong to a, a single country right uh, the rand belongs to, to South Africa, the dollar to the US, the pound to the UK, but gold is a universal currency. It works everywhere for as long as someone is willing to accept it there. So Bitcoin is exactly the same, uh, but it also allows you to become the custodian of your own money. With paper money or fiat money, is we keep it in the banks because that's how it's based on laws. We have to agree that this is money and then we have to trust institutions to keep it and manage it for us. Whereas with gold, you can simply buy uh, a bullion and keep it in your house, right? Bitcoin is exactly the same. You buy it, you keep it in your own wallet, you send it whenever you want uh, to whoever you want. Whereas with cash, if you decide right now to withdraw 100,000, your bank will say, oh, you have reached your limit. Then maybe you have to report to the branch, you know, all that stuff. So okay. it's just better money, really. Okay. But like gold, we know it, it comes from the ground. You've got to go and mine it. Where does mm-hmm. Bitcoin come from? Bitcoin also sort of copied the aspect of mining mm-hmm. uh, to make sure that for you to get some Bitcoin, you need to put in the work to mine it, except that it's mined by computers. The good thing is everyone can become a miner if you have uh, computers that are uh, powerful enough to mine the Bitcoins. Basically, there's a process of verifying each and every transaction that goes through the, the Bitcoin network. And if uh, a, com- a certain computer, so it, each computer is given a complicated mathematical equation to solve. And if it gets it correct and proves that this transaction that is about to go through is true because the source wallet has the funds and the recipient is also a Bitcoin wallet, which is eligible to receive funds, then the miner gets rewarded in Bitcoin. Meaning that that is how Bitcoins are generated by someone putting in the work of mining transactions. And when the transactions are correct, they get the Bitcoins as a reward. So uh, there is that system, uh, meaning that you can just decide to go m- create more Bitcoins and copy and paste, but also Bitcoin has a limited supply. Yeah. Unlike our paper money, which the government can just keep, keep printing more, like what's happening now in the US, they say, oh, we need to give people uh, a stimulus check. Yeah. They print trillions, they give it to the citizens. What's start happening is that uh, that system is stealing from you because your yeah, money that you had is now worth less due to inflation. Whereas Bitcoin, it has a set limit of how many Bitcoins will ever exist, 21 million coins. And right now we're sitting at about 18.3 million or something. That's been mined. Over time, exactly. Over time, it will become more and more difficult for you to own some Bitcoin because it's becoming more rare. That's why also the so price... What happens in that case once we reach the cap of the 21 million? Well, to, to begin with, that will happen in 2140, I think. Okay. Because its supply gets decrease, decreasing over time. Yeah. So, yeah, there is this thing we call a, a block reward, which mm-hmm. is how many Bitcoins are given at a time when uh, a block of transactions have been confirmed. Yeah. Right now, I think at, uh, about two years ago, it used to be about, six, it used to be about 12.5 Bitcoins. 
And after about uh, 210,000 blocks, it, it, it reduces to by half. And that, that event is called the Bitcoin halving. Now, per block, which, is, which happens almost every 10 minutes, okay. uh, a block reward is now 6.25 uh, Bitcoins. Okay. Right. Okay. So you can imagine after another 210,000 blocks, that will be halving again. Yeah. And then it will be halving again. And it will become 0.1 at one point for a block reward. But that system works because the, over time, the price of Bitcoin increases in dollar value or in fiat value. So your bit, you might be receiving less Bitcoin as you go, but it will be worth a lot more. Mm-hmm. All right. Exactly. All right. So as regular normal people just doing our bit to survive in this country, why should we be investing in Bitcoin? Look, if you, I think right now we had a cask of change in terms of what money is and what we've been thinking of it. This event happens um, every now and then, you know, uh, after so many years, society is always changing money, right? And currency is actually the new money, the new form of money, because it's better in a lot of ways than our money. So not everybody is going to buy Bitcoin, Right. Okay. Not everyone will, will, will be a participant in this transition of currency. But if you make yourself involved on that transition, the, the upside of what you can make is a lot, right? Just like people who believed in Bitcoin when it just came out, maybe a year after when it was $1 or $2, right? Right now, they have really been incentivized highly if they're still holding the Bitcoins. And uh, it's almost like when we moved from... Uh, from a, the gold standard to the current money, there's certain people who benefits uh, who benefited a lot from fiat currencies through banks and other services, right? Or the credit system. And now we're moving into sound money again that is more global and universal. So if you make yourself involved in that, then I think you have a high upside. What is there to lose? You can put a little bit of money into it, buy some coins, and it could be worth something much in the future. In my case, it was. You know, I started buying Bitcoin sometime when it was 6,000 Rand, I believe, at the time. Okay. Now, one Bitcoin... Exactly, right? And it's not really that long if you consider how investments appreciate. Yeah. You know, if you look at Bitcoin as an investment. Um, and what now one Bitcoin is 700,000 Rand. So wow. you can imagine, this is a period of five or six years. Yeah. You know, what, what else could have given you that much return? More return. Okay. So how are the different ways for us to be involved and start, start getting in, invested in this kind of investment? Uh, it's simple. All you need is an application. It's actually easier to buy Bitcoin than it, than it is to buy gold, right? Okay. Or to buy foreign currencies. Because mm-hmm. for you to buy foreign, let's say if you want to buy US dollars, you're going to go to the exchange bureau or the bank. They'll ask you a bunch of questions and all that. <laughs> Bitcoin is not yes. the same. You can download an app. Uh, in South Africa, we have Luno, okay. we have Valor. You have two apps that are incredible. You download those apps. Uh, you download Luno specifically. It's easier for a lot of people. You deposit a little bit of money in there uh, and you do your verifications with your ID and stuff. And you can deposit as little as, I think, 300 Rand. Okay. Right? You can buy 300 Rand worth of Bitcoin or 1,000 Rand or whatever amount you're comfortable with. And then, you know, uh, I believe that when you buy into it, that's when you start actually paying attention and learning more about it. So the most important thing to do is not to listen to so many podcasts, read so many articles about it and all that, that that will just be end up in paralysis by analysis, get some with a relatively small amount, and then you start paying attention and then you learn, and then you can start implementing what are what is called dollar cost averaging, which what, what, what I recommend for a lot of people is that the game is to make sure that you have a, a more bitcoins over time than you have today so okay. the way you do that or the way i used to do it i still do that today is that i put a, uh, a small amount of my income into buying bitcoin every every two weeks i do it every two weeks you can choose your own time frame every month or every week you buy a small amount consistently and over time that uh, has proven to be very 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 um effective Okay, so we basically wait for the value to go up. Uh, ideally, you want to hold this this kind of investment in the long term because we've seen the returns over five years. It's 
maybe 1000 2000 3000 percent in growth so so how would we use this we have it digitally in our wallets uh, we have a digital mm-hmm. wallet so what do we do with this after 10 15 years it depends how you you want, you want to look at it right it's you can see it as a better i see it as a better way of storing value money right <laughs> Keeping money in the bank, it, I don't think it's to me. I don't think it's something that I would want to do anymore because the interest rates are super low and the inflation rate on all these currencies is so bad, especially especially after the COVID and all the money that has been printed right now. Yeah. Uh, it means that if you if you work, if you have a job, you get a salary, uh, you're probably losing 15% of the value each and every year. So even if you get a raise, your raise is more likely not more than 15%. If you're lucky, it's you're getting 15%. If you're super lucky, right? For most people, that's not the case. So you can imagine that on average, let's say things are getting more expensive by 15%, yeah. but your income is still the same. Mm. So, okay, well, how do you hedge that? To me, I think of a currency like Bitcoin, which on average, it has been going up by 100% a year plus since it started. So yeah. that does not mean that it's a linear scale where every year it's going to go 100%. It can fluctuate up and, down, up and down. But over time, if you stretch out the time, you would see that it has been appreciating. And by design, it's a deflationary currency, meaning that because it has a fixed supply, more likely over time, it's more likely to get expensive as it goes. So oh. how do you use the currency? It's up to you. To me, I use it to pay people. Uh, everybody, my, most of my team want to get paid in Bitcoin. The global team, it would be a nightmare if I had to try to pay them with with the bank. You already know it would be expensive and a nightmare to do it. It, is, uh, yeah. it. it helps me to invest in other things that would rather be complicated for me to invest in, like stocks. In cryptocurrency, we have now what we call tokenized stocks. So okay. the same stocks, Facebook, Google, Amazon, and all that, you can find a way to invest in them, but you invest in, uh, in them as tokenized stocks instead of the actual stock. So you okay. don't really need a broker at all. You just hold a token or a coin that is backed by that asset. That's right? so interesting. And how do you do that? I mean, there, there's a whole process about it. If you want to learn things like this, you can get into crypto university, okay. uh, which is platform that I founded to learn more about for you, if you want to become like a serious crypto investor or a trader, I would recommend you go to cryptouniversity.co.za. All that information is there. But basically, Bitcoin itself gives you pretty much access to a, a whole new world and a whole new market where you can simply now have, you have power over your money. You can okay. get into things that you want, which I think it increases opportunity for, for most of us. The world yeah. has become more global right now. And the fiat money try to, to sort of convince and force us to just think within our borders most of, most of the time, right? Yes. But once you have a global currency, you can now think a lot bigger and start taking uh, more chances and more opportunities to grow your wealth, if that's what you're trying to do. Okay, so we've been talking about Bitcoin for, for a while, but I know there's over a thousand plus, uh, last time I checked, there was a thousand plus, could be more now, cryptocurrencies. Um, how, how are those different from Bitcoin? Uh, they are about 6,000 now. Okay. All right. So, you know, they have their own use cases, but, you know, it, it became almost like um, because you can now create projects on the blockchain. When Ethereum came out specifically, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it gave people access, easy access to now build applications and software on top of blockchains which was impossible before Ethereum because you had to now, everybody had to create their own b- blockchain to create a project. So let's look at Bitcoin. Uh, we learned what it is. You know, it has its own good things. It's incredible. Uh, it's decentralized. It has no central authority and all that. But it also has its own problems, Yeah. right, at a technical level. So someone would say, oh, well, Bitcoin is great. But I think if it was now that we know how to build a decentralized currency, uh, what if we also add these other elements to it? Mm-hmm. So if you have that kind of idea, you can create your own currency, your own, you can copy the Bitcoin code if you want to and edit it and add some things to it. If you know how to do that, now you've created your own coin. But then that depends if people are willing to believe that uh, to trust in your coin and then you create a community around it and it also becomes money. So that dynamic now changed, it means a lot of things to me that now the idea of, of the money monopoly to be 
to belong to government isn't doesn't really exist as much anymore. Yeah. Because we used to think that only governments can print money. But right now it means that everyone can for as long as you have people who believe that that, that system. money you printed has value, right? Yeah. And now they're also uh they they in 2017 there was an insurgence of ICOs which are companies that were saying, "Oh, we have this idea of 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 building uh, this software on top of this Ethereum blockchain and whatever. And if you believe in those, you buy some tokens and then they could turn into something. So one of the most popular coin is Ethereum. Yeah. Like I said before, Ethereum is a blockchain, meaning that if you want to build uh, an app uh, that, that stands on blockchain technology, you don't have to create your own blockchain. You can simply just create it on top of Ethereum. Now, Ethereum is also, uh, it has a token called Ether. Why ETH or other people also refer uh, to it as Ethereum. The Ether itself is not really meant to be as money per se. It's a okay. utility token, which means that for you to use the Ethereum blockchain, you need to have those coins to pay gas fees to the network because each and every chain charges you a fee for every little thing that you do on the blockchain. So Ethereum is, is, is more, it's gas fees for the Ethereum blockchain basically, right? So you can see that all the tokens are the different um, meaning some of them are coins, some of, their, uh, some of them are, are tokens. There's some, uh, there are some privacy coins as well, which like, uh, like Monero and Zcash, that they are like Bitcoin, but the emphasis is on privacy that you cannot, uh, that you cannot track transactions at all, right? So depending on what you want and what you believe in and what you, how you think of the future, you can really pick and choose what you want. But Bitcoin is the only currency that's really decentralized. It cannot be stopped, has been around for years. It has never been hacked. So uh, you can diversify if you want, touch into any other coins if you see potential. But I'll, I, I actually recommend that people stick to Bitcoin as much as they can. Maybe you can expose 30 or 20% of your uh, crypto portfolio into the others because there are 6,000. So you can imagine. Yeah. your the probability ratio for for you to pick the right ones which will become something one day mm -hmm. is very little yeah okay um wouldn't this doesn't this conflict with the government system um and taxes i mean the whole monetary system is is basically the government system, you know they're cut from our money doesn't this system conflict with the government in terms of taxation well then if we had to wait for governments to change things for us, to build anything, then we'll be still living in a stone age, if you think about it, yeah. right? Uh, imagine if we had to wait for government to think of an idea like Uber or Facebook. <laughs> okay. yeah. They would never do that, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's their responsibility to catch up and find ways how they can take advantage of this, make it work for them. Okay. Uh, but it, it is happening. It's a real thing. Much like when Uber came, it disrupted a lot of things. Yeah. And they had to, to deal with it because you can't just say, oh, we're stopping this because it's for our own reasons when there are no good reasons for people to use it. So how are you going to force me to use a taxi, a random taxi off the road when I can use Uber, which is more secure because I have information of my driver, their history. Mm -hmm. If something happens to me, I, I can contact Uber and there is some level of security. And I'm insured if I'm in that car, Yeah. right? So whose responsibility to figure that out? I mean, there's a better coin that is competing with your currency. Now the government is their job to figure out how are they going to take advantage of it or build something better. Okay. So uh, I think most governments are catching up to it, starting to uh, find ways to regulate it and Ta tax it you know there are many ways to tax it it's technology you just have to build tools to allow you to do it and maybe um pay attention to regulating the institutions that are involved in these uh, projects almost like in south africa you can uh, regulate exchanges like luno right because they hold a lot of bitcoin they process a lot of bitcoin and as a government, you can work with, the, with them because eventually they will become banks, they, which they already are, yeah. uh, if you think about it. To me, the idea of a bank, if, you, if it's custodianship, then Luno is pretty much a bank because okay. it's holding billions in Bitcoin of other people's money. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So in South Africa, let's say a couple of years ago, I bought some Bitcoin and because Bitcoin is searching and I want to make a small withdrawal, I have an emergency, how, how would I be taxed or would I even be taxed? Is there a threshold yeah, or something? 
there, there isn't a specific way to tax it or that applies to cryptocurrency alone, mm. but they will more likely look at it as capital gains. Capital gains. All right. So the, 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 the taxing, the taxation is a little bit complicated uh, because there are, there are no clear regulations. So what I recommend is that you work with, if you bought Bitcoin a couple of years ago, you have more, more than make enough money to contact yeah. a tax consultant or your accountant to help you with how you're going to file it. Okay. So where do you see Bitcoin in the future? I think Bitcoin will become the power uh, monetary system that it already is. It's just going to become bigger. We're going to see bigger companies getting into the space with billions of dollars, like Apple is probably next, because uh, you see that most remittance apps are now uh, starting to implement Bitcoin uh, in their application, which means uh, apps will now become uh, interchangeable. You can send money from your PayPal account into your Venmo account or some other app of money Mm -hmm. because uh, the settlement is done in Bitcoin. Right now, for me to send money from PayPal to another PayPal, it has to be another PayPal user. Yeah. But if you if you the settlement is happening in Bitcoin, it means that there, the border doesn't really make, matter anymore, or uh, it's harder for you to send money to someone who is overseas because of conversion rates and you know uh, the the forex rates that the banks have to do. Whereas with Bitcoin, there is no problem like that. So it will see that the payment system will become more global and easier to access. And at the same time, which is already happening, if you're into this crypto space, you would know that there is this thing called decentralized finance, which is almost like using cryptocurrencies to offer the same services that, that the banks will offer you. So there are, there are services right now that would say, okay, we're going to keep your Bitcoin and every year we're going to give you X amount in, uh, in, in returns like 12 percent some say five percent interest on your on your bitcoin so if you're holding a lot of bitcoin uh which can be a little right now but in the future it will be will be worth a lot you can actually live off that there are people doing that already right now you can be able it will be able to live off that so i think it's a it will be more adopted but it will become more expensive for the average person to buy in because the transaction fees will increase uh, but also the price would be astronomically high. So for everyone listening to this, you might as, as well want to get in right now. Already. Okay, so now is the time then. Exactly. All right. Is, uh, do you think Bitcoin is going to drop? I mean, like it, in, I think it was in 2017, that December, that summer period, where it just surged and then it came down for a couple of years, maybe two, two years or so. It was sitting at around $4,000, $3,000 and it slowly went up. And now we at what, $50,000 today? Do you think it's going to go back to those kind of prices? I don't know. You know, I don't know the future. Um, Mm -hmm. It's more likely just as a trader. And, you know, you know that everything has to go up and down. The markets don't really go in a linear format. Yeah. Um, So from the technical point of view, I would say, yeah, it would make sense for you to correct. But the thing is, it, it doesn't really help me with much. Let's say I want to buy in. If I have to wait for it to crash, then I'm also risking uh, losing to, uh, to the price if it's, it goes up, right? Meaning that I'll be able to buy less Bitcoin than right now. So that question, someone would have asked at 20,000, uh, do you think Bitcoin will crash? Well, some people sold at uh, above 20,000, then it went to 30,000, then you wait for it to crash, then it went to 40,000. Now it's at 50,000 and you have been watching it since 20,000. So it's really hard to play these mind games of uh, crash, you know, to buy at the right time and all that. What I think is, is worth doing is to just do dollar cost averaging, like I said before, if you're looking to buy, yeah, right? Meaning that you buy at a different price points over time. Uh, on average, you're going to buy it at an average price better than someone who jumped in in one price point and then maybe the price crashed after that. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Interesting. So, Greg, you're going to be at Financial Success Summit in April. Uh, what are you going to be sharing with the attendees there? Uh, we'll be sharing the history of money uh, and how money evolved to get us to the point to where Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are and the future of cryptocurrencies, uh, but also decentralized finance mm-hmm. um, and also some other developments that have happened in the recent months and years in the cryptocurrency space which a lot of people can take advantage of and really improve their life but they just don't know about it 
Okay, awesome. So we're going to see you again in April at uh, Financial Success Summit. And it's a virtual summit, so folks can watch it on their phone, on their tabs, um, during their lunch break, at home, wherever you are. So it's something different that we're putting out. And the nice thing about it, it's not from a big conglomerate that's trying to push products down your throat. It's just going to be some very influential people in the industry sharing the best knowledge that they have with, with everybody. All right, so great. Thank you for your time. I look forward to it. And thank you so much for having me. So Greg really brought us some real value in that chat. And if you want to know more about crypto investments, you got to join us at Financial Success Summit 2021. Greg is going to be one of our key speakers that are going to be taking the stage and sharing with us the future of blockchain in Africa and how you can get involved. So you don't want to miss that talk. We have some amazing guest speakers as well, such as Rabbi Daniel Lappin, South African born, a financial guru now based in the United States. And he's a best-selling author and sharing ancient wealth building strategies with us. We also have Kantha Naika, the chairperson of the South African Professional Accountants Institute. And she's going to be sharing with us how we can keep more of our hard-earned money and not lose out to taxes. And if you want to know more about property investments, we have uh, a real innovator, award-winning property investor, Selendile Lesayani. She's going to be sharing all about property stock files. This is just a few of the guests that we have on Financial Success Summit. Tons more guests coming up, so stay tuned to this uh, channel. Subscribe and hit that notification button down below and go and grab your tickets. Early bird tickets are available now and you're getting 60% off those tickets. Go to www.financialsuccesssummit.net and buy those tickets. The general admission is 100 Rand and you can get 60 Rand off today if you use coupon code EARLYBIRD when you check out.